All right. Um, thank you so much for the kind words, Sacha. I might not be eligible for all those kind words, but definitely, yes, we do have a praying mother at home who is the reason why we all are uh, what we are now. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, let's quickly bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to gather as young couple community, Lord. Lord, as we take out this time to meditate on your word from 2 Corinthians, help us to understand what you want us to convey and help us to implement that in our life, no matter how the situation is, Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we ponder over these verses and help us to implement that in our day-to-day -day activities. We ask all this in your mighty name. Amen. Yeah, so um, in this precious allotted short time that I have, um, I would like to shed some light on the topic that is very important, that is imperative for all, all of us as young couples, that is the power of walking by faith in God. And uh, Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, that for we live by faith and not by sight. And this verse clearly illustrates that no matter how bad or how good the situation is, we need to live our lives by strengthening our faith in God. And I'm sure that you all might agree that our generation has experienced one of the greatest pandemic that has happened in the history, wherein millions of people have lost their life. But still, God says, I'm there with you if you hold on to me. So um, I'm sure uh, that you all might agree, just give me a minute, that we have crores of people in this world and I would like to broadly classify the people in this world into three simple categories. And the first one being atheist. You all will agree and might have seen in your workplaces or in your community that there are certain section of people who do not believe in God, who believe that God doesn't exist at all. Okay. And uh, this particular number is increasing with every passing year. So if I uh, look at the rough estimates, the number is close to 10% in America right now and uh, similar figures in most of the European countries. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. So they actually uh, make fun of people who believe in God and they say that whatever we do as believers is just uh, for the sake of it. This is one category. And the next category is carnal Christians. And I'm sure you all might agree to this, that carnal Christians are the one <clears throat> who are Christians, but then they are just Christians for the sake of it, like Christians um, who listen to the word of God, who listen to so many things at church and different gatherings. But when it comes to implementation, they try to act smart, like how we say in our terminology of youngsters, they try to act smart and they try to judge certain things on their own understanding. And um, we have a very good illustration in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 4. It says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. You're still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not worldly. Are you not acting like mere humans? So, like, as I said, um, most of us are well-educated now. We have a bachelor's degree, we have a master's degree, PhD, postdoc, whatnot. And then 
in certain situations of our life, rather than depending upon God and asking him for help and support, we try to come up with our own judgment and we feel that, hey, I know the answer. I know what needs to be done. And ultimately, you guys might have seen in your uh, day-to-day life or in your community how things have turned out to be. When we try to depend on our own understanding and not trust on God. Third category is the believers. These are the people who, no matter how well educated they are or they are not, they just believe in the judgment of God. Like how it says in 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16, the person with the spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ. So they always look up to God day and night and they seek answers from God because God wants us to look up to him at every point of our time, point of our life, because he knows that if he gives us infinity happiness, we might not look back to him. So he definitely makes sure that he gives us only in the limited amount so that we will again get back to him and we still believe in him rather than depending on our own knowledge and talent. And um, I'm sure we have a lot of educated folks in this group. So I would like to uh, simply classify the knowledge that we have in this world in two simple categories. First being the sense knowledge We all know this right from our school days. We have been listening to this five senses. And most of the education that we see in this world is based on any one of these. It could be some graduation course, some master's course, medicine, engineering, everything revolves around this. And then we have the revelation knowledge. So here, like how we started off, with the first, second Corinthians 5, 7, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. As we all know, this book is the most important book in the world for the simple reason that this talks about the past, it talks about the present, as well as the future. So it talks about what happened in the past for us to understand uh, our history And then it talks about what will happen right now so that we know how should we lead our life and how should we get closer to God and serve God, serve mankind. And then it also talks about the future, uh, that what is going to happen and how should we prepare ourselves for God's second coming. And I would like to uh, quickly explain Uh, not really explain, but try to correlate certain things uh, with our present day world. So all of us right from our Sunday school days, we all know the story of Adam and Eve, which is very well illustrated in uh, the book of Genesis. Um, Like God has given Adam and Eve the best resources, the best place to live in. You all know, right? The best uh, fruits to eat, the best uh, garden in the world. And then God instructed them, you can do whatever you want, but do not eat the fruit from that one particular tree. And that was the instruction given. And we all know what happened after that. Because of what Adam did, he, because of what Adam uh, did, like how salaries get credited into our account, sin has got credited into our account as soon as we have taken our birth. Because of Adam's sin, the entire mankind is bearing the consequences of that. And I would like to correlate that with our present generation. Right now, like how we had the Garden of Eden, we have the Garden of Technology now. God has given us the gift of technology. Now we can sit at one place and talk to anybody around the world, get the education, get the business deal done get the doctor consultation as well. And maybe in the future, we might do surgeries as well. But 
my dear friends, please to understand and please to listen to the word and the voice of God, which says, hey, I'm giving you everything, but there are certain limitations to it. Let's only utilize it for the benefit of the mankind, for the benefit of um, our families, our community, and for the benefit of people who would need it and not misuse it. Because I've seen a lot of people, I do not want to take names, but I've seen a lot of people who have gone ahead and misused it. And ultimately, you know, what uh, is the consequences of that? The people who are supposed to get the benefits of technology are being deprived technology and they are not getting the enough resources. So my dear young couples, I'm sure you all are adhering to this, but just a word of rehydration. Let's utilize it in the right way. And then who doesn't know the story of Abraham and Sarah? Uh, right from our Sunday school days, as I said, we have never seen a person who had so much of faith in God. Like uh, we have a name for Abraham, that is the man of faith. Though he was 100 years old, when God told him that, hey, you're going to have a baby and uh, Sarah will conceive it. Instead of doubting God or mocking God, he believed in God and ultimately, <laughs> and ultimately uh, he could see the consequences of that. God gifted Abraham with a son. Similarly, all of you all might have experienced a lot of older couples in our community, in our churches, in our workplaces, who have believed in God. Even they had a lot of hardships in their life, but they believed in God and they had gone ahead. And uh, God was always by them, by their side, no matter what the situation was. And now as they grew older, they tell stories to their grandchildren on the significance of walking by faith and not by sight. Then we have a very famous story of young David. So this particular young chap, he fought the biggest of the giant, that is Goliath, right? And when Goliath came with a lot of armors, he came with uh, javelin, he came with a sword and other things. But what did David say in First Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, 45? David said, you come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of armies, whom you have defined. So he just had the name of the Lord God Almighty and just a sling with a stone and he was able to put down the giant. Similarly, I'm sure you all can relate to this. In this present world, we also have different types of Goliaths. It could be a bad boss. It could be office politics. It could be insane culture in our organization or in our community that might be blocking our, blocking our success. But then, please do remember the verse again, verse 45. We're going to go against them in the name of the Almighty Lord. No matter how big, no matter how big the performance review is, no matter how big the data that I have for us, no matter how big uh, of uh, analysis they have come against us, always remember, if there is truth on our side, God will always be on our side. Okay, on this short note, I would like to share a personal experience of mine. Um, I got married in the year 2016, and my wife's name is Sneha. And uh, before marriage, uh, we were very active in our church activities and also after marriage. And like any other uh, Christian couple, we were so happy with our marriage. And uh, we were also actively participating after marriage as well in the church activities and other social gatherings. And uh, one year passed by after a year or so, then we, we got a news that my wife had conceived and we were all excited. So us as a joint family, so we were all excited about that. And uh, 
uh, we started praying, we started thanking God for that precious gift. And then we went for the regular checkup. The first checkup was done and everything was okay. We were so excited, we were happy, we came down, we were jotting down the plan, what should be the name of the baby, if it is a boy, if it is a girl, what should be the name, and uh, what type of education should we give, syllabus, schools, everything was like, we were like scheduling everything for the baby. Second uh, doctor's consultation passed by, everything was normal, we were all excited. On the third consultation, uh, doctor just called both of us and uh, doctor said, uh, that they have seen some complications in the pregnancy and uh, they had asked us to go for a confirmed test. So the, the test that we took was a preliminary test. They said that they could sense some complications and um, they asked us to go for the confirmation test. And we were like devastated when we heard that news. And doctor gave us a big explanation behind it because doctor asked us uh, like, did you have like, from both of our families, from my family and my wife's family, did anybody have complications in the past? Did any of the babies had issues in the past when they were born? We, we said, no, nothing of that sort. And uh, if, our, if both of us were related or something of that kind, we said, nothing. And we were like totally down. We were like thinking, God, what did we do for this? Okay, right from our childhood, we led a Christian life and... Uh, even after marriage, we were so close to you. But why us? Why us? None of our family has faced this, but why us? So that was a totally very painful situation for me. And at the same time, I was almost about to get promoted at work. I let go that uh, offer as well. And I was totally fo uh, focusing on um, our baby. So we were like totally down and uh, we went to a lot of churches in Kerala as well because we believe uh, that God has an answer no matter what, there could be a reason behind it. So we went to a lot of churches in Kerala, we prayed rigorously, we fasted for a lot of days and our family was also considerate. Uh, they said, hey, you guys are so young now, that's okay, you guys can try later maybe god will bless you with many more babies in the future and they were just telling us to think otherwise but we said no no matter what it is we will have this baby we we believe in god and we prayed so much for this baby we believe that god will help us uh, get this baby in a healthy way we prayed and uh, after uh, so much of prayer and fasting and faith in God, we had gone ahead and we took up the confirmation test. Uh, God willing and with God's grace, 99% it was negative, but 1% again, God said, right now we cannot detect it um, in the confirmation test, but there is again a probability of 1%. So you might have to wait until you deliver the baby, but for now it is safe. So, but we still had that in our mind. Uh, why us, God? Why me? Why? What did I do? I, I was like serving you all, all of my life so far, and we'll do that in the future. And uh, yeah, so we uh, lived our life with that, and up until the delivery date. And when my wife delivered our first kid, that is. George on the 24th of July 2018 we were so happy that we were blessed with a healthy baby boy without any issues and this is a photograph of our first onam that we celebrated in Kerala and that was my son George's first onam so we were so happy with that because God showed us that hey this might happen to you but do you believe in me a lot of verses in the Bible came into my mind, like a verse of Abraham, wherein Abraham uh, had faith in God, no matter how old he was. Similarly, I had faith in God, no matter what situation it was. And we were so, uh, I should say, blessed 
rather than saying lucky, I should say we were so blessed to have a healthy baby boy. Um, and he is like uh, very active now. He just turned three years a few days ago. And uh, he, he came out for a marathon walk today with us, kind of a walk and a run. So we are so happy that uh, God has never left us because we had faith in the word of the God and we were believing only in the revelation knowledge, like how I said, knowledge of revelation and not on the knowledge of senses, not on the knowledge of science and other things which also exist in the world. So with that note, I would like to check if anybody in the audience, if you would like to share your experience as well, it would be of great help. Thank you, Wilfred, for that uh, your presentation based on the uh, testimony, personal experience. Would anyone like to share their experience? Uh, 